Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to another Soul Calibur video. Today I'll be talking about the leader of the Manji clan, Yoshimitsu. Now Yoshimitsu isn't so much a name, but a title that is handed down generation by generation for a new leader of the Manji clan. This is normally done in order to keep the mystique that there's only one Yoshimitsu that exists within the Manji clan, and that he or she is everlasting. Now it's also tradition here to inherit the predecessor's sword, as well as kill the former leader in order to prove that they are in fact worthy of the Yoshimitsu title. Now the Manji clan had a reputation for being a group of chivalrous thieves, so they would steal from the rich in order to give stuff back to the poor. Now, unfortunately this did put them in the eyes of many individuals, one of them being Nobunaga Oda, a daimyo who at the time was trying to unify Japan. He reached out to the leader of the Manji clan Yoshimitsu and invited him to his castle as he wanted to convince him to join his alliance as he wanted their assistance. Now normally Yoshi wouldn't turn something like this down, but something like like this put them directly in the public's eye, putting not only himself and the Manji clan in danger, but the very village they lived in. So unfortunately Yoshimitsu had to decline this offer. Now when he returned back home, he found his village in ruins. You see here, Oda was anticipating Yoshimitsu's decline, so as a way of showing his power, Oda had his village burned to the ground. Now because of this, Yoshimitsu would set his eyes on Oda and his forces, and although he was successful in killing many members of his army, he was outmatched. And in the process of this battle in fact lost his right arm. So later down the line, he would gain a wooden prosthetic. Now understandably, Yoshimitsu was quite bitter about this betrayal, so he would plan his revenge, but knew that this could only be acquired if he were to obtain a powerful weapon. And this is where Soul Edge comes into play. Yoshimitsu had heard rumours from Europe that a powerful being called Nightmare had wielded a weapon forged by gods. So Yoshimitsu would actively try to seek him out, but unfortunately by the time he arrived at Ostra, he was unable to find anyone. But when he left the castle, he realised that his blade was resonating with some form of dark and chaotic energy, so he would ultimately try his best to suppress this. Unfortunately, this did take a toll on him, as it would make him extremely tired. So one night when he fell asleep, his sword would in fact be stolen by Voldo. Now Yoshimitsu did not want this weapon to fall into the wrong hands, so he would track it down and infiltrate the legendary money pit, where he would find his sword. Now it was lying next to a fragment of Soul Edge, and it's here where he realised that his sword and the shard were emitting the same energies. Shocked by how powerful these shards were, Yoshimitsu would make it his sole objective to have them destroyed, but he knew he couldn't do this alone, so Yoshimitsu would travel all the way back home to Japan, where he would in fact reform the Manji clan, and together they would seek out and destroy any remaining shards of Soul Edge. Now in the third Soul Calibur game, Yoshimitsu and the Manji clan were tracking down a fragment of Soul Edge that was held within a mansion, and for the most part everything was going according to plan, but when his vanguard force entered the treasure room, they were all killed, and when he arrived there, the fragment of Soul Edge had seemingly disappeared. Now amongst his men, many of them believed that they had in fact been betrayed, but Yoshimitsu was able to examine the wounds, and came to the conclusion that this wasn't done by anyone in their clan. The damage and style of these cuts are far too regular to be from someone they knew, so he and the Manji clan would travel across the entire globe to try and track down this individual. Individual. And after a very long search, they realised that it was an associate of Nightmare, Tira. Now she was eventually tracked down and battling a member of the Manji clan. She almost in fact killed him until Yoshimitsu had turned up. After taking care of his wounded ally, Yoshimitsu sensed that the final battle was drawing near, and it would commence at Ostreinsberg. So he would call the rest of the Manji clan and tell them all to go to Ostreinsberg so they could go to the heart of this evil and finally destroy Soul Edge. Now we are currently unaware of what Yoshimitsu Yoshimitsu and the Manji clan were doing during the climax of Soul Calibur 4, but Soul Edge and Nightmare were destroyed by Siegfried and Soul Calibur. So with the demonic sword vanquished, Yoshimitsu and the rest of the Manji clan would return back to Japan and rebuild their lives there once again, continuing the traditions of their ancestors. Now 16 years would pass by, and somehow the former wielder of Soul Edge, Cervantes, had come back from the dead. He set his eyes on Yoshimitsu, as he knew that the blade he had wielded was very similar to that of Soul Edge. Now Yoshimitsu knew that he was old and way beyond his prime, so for his and the clan's best interests, he would have this sword be passed down. But of course he wouldn't do this without a fight, so through the Manji clan's traditions, he would battle a new up-and-comer, and eventually Yoshimitsu was defeated and killed, so his title could be handed down to a new generation. So yes, the Yoshimitsu we in fact see in Soul Calibur 5 is not the same one we've seen in previous games. If you actually look at his select screen picture in Soul Calibur 5, you can kind of see him perched 
switched over the head of the other Yoshimitsu, which is kind of twisted. Now, unfortunately, due to how poorly written the Soul Calibur 5 story mode is and the lack of arcade endings, we don't really get a good idea of what's going on with this character. So what we know about the second Yoshimitsu is actually vague at best, as really he does have little to no story here. But yeah, that's kind of it for the Yoshimitsu video, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about the character. I do apologize about this video coming out quite late. I unfortunately was quite busy over the weekend, but do not worry as you guys will in fact be getting another Soul Calibur video this Saturday, which will be the history of Sophitia. So please do keep an eye out about that. Now, what do you think about Yoshimitsu? Which version of the character is your favorite? And are you looking forward to see his eventual reveal in Soul Calibur 6? Please comment down below. Hopefully this bridges two of my videos together as I talked about the Yoshimitsu from the Tekken games, as the two games kind of share the same universe, although the line is very blurred, as there's inconsistencies with both series, but it does seem like the corrupted sword that Yoshimitsu wielded in the second Soul Calibur game is in fact the same one we see in the Tekken games, as they both do have demonic properties to them. But yeah, that's really it for this video guys. Now if possible guys, let's try getting this video to about 500 likes. It's a great way of supporting this channel as YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. So by giving a thumbs up, it helps out a ton. And if you'd like to go the extra step, we also have a Patreon set up and a link for that will be down in the description below. Anyway guys, as always, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.